Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to discuss how I traded Micro ES and NQ today using advanced features of market net flow and various volume price analysis and market awareness techniques. Keep in mind ES, SPY, and SPX all have the same price action, so if you trade one of them, you can trade any of them. It just really depends on your personal style of trading and the accessibility of futures, indices, and ETFs through your broker. Before we get started, if you would like to get a 10% discount for Tradeetix, don't forget to use my referral link in the description. You also find referral links for TradingView, top set funded trader programs for futures trading, and interactive brokers that will give us all discounts. So, lastly, if you enjoy this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. So, the thing I want to talk about today is how, uh, well, how the whole day went and how market net flow helped me capture a lot of great trades today that I probably would have otherwise missed and it even helped me overcome some bias that I was having. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about when the day was starting I knew it was going to be a huge trading day because we had some major macroeconomic events occurring. Not only did we have PCE inflation numbers, initial jobless claim numbers, uh, real consumer spending numbers, and things like that that always have a huge impact on the market actually m typically pce inflation is more important to the fed than than core cpi numbers are so we were expecting some big moves from those numbers especially if they were worse or better than expected and also what a lot of people weren't aware of was that the jpm collar was being rolled today now I have on my screen, you can see how that collar is constructed. If you're interested, I highly recommend researching that. It happens every single month at the end of the month and it leads to some wild price action near the end of the day when they're actually doing the rolling. But all I was going, the reason I talk about this is because I was going into the, the day with all these things in mind and I was keeping a close eye on these numbers starting at 8.30 in the morning uh, Eastern time when they were first released. Now, another thing I wanna point out quickly is before the market had opened uh, or excuse me when the market had first opened and all throughout the day I was keeping an eye on this heat map now if you watch my other videos I find market awareness to be very important and I've always kind of had used different techniques for paying attention to the sectors that and the, and the main holdings that control the S&P 500 especially when I'm trading ES and I ended up finding this amazing tool it's actually free on TradingView, and it is a heat map that shows you the biggest holdings as well as all the sectors that are part of the S&P 500. And at one quick glance, as you can see from the screenshot, you can see what all the sectors look like. And this was pretty much the story of the day. From the beginning of the day, all of the big names and sectors were red, with the exception of utilities and a few other names. And this actually gradually shifted. And just in case you're not familiar with where to find that feature, if we go over here to Trading View and you go to Products, Heat Maps, Stock, it will actually pull up this heat map and you can even choose the index of choice in, in, in case you choose to trade QQQ or DIA, or in my case, I'm mostly focused on SPY and ES. So uh, it's a very useful tool actually replaced a lot of different windows tabs and charts for me I now primarily use this to pay attention to what's happening to sectors and big names it just is a very convenient way for viewing that stuff so uh, I highly recommend checking it out if you're not already aware of it now the other thing I always check at the beginning of the day which if you've watched any of my other videos you'll know that I find this to be very important is gamma exposure and going into the day we had very high negative gamma exposure and most of that negative gamma was centered around the 380 level so the reason that's important is because when we have big levels of gamma like this not only do they act often as reversal points but they typically act as magnets so when we opened we were well under this level and we were driving lower which you'll see soon and sure enough lo and behold as it typically does price started driving back towards that 380 level and there's a lot of reasons for that I don't want to get into gamma exposure too deep in this video I highly recommend researching it. it's a very complex topic it has to do with how hedge funds and market makers uh, drive price on underlying futures based on hedging mechanisms for the options that they're selling across the market 
and some people call it manipulation, but there are actually valid reasons for it, and it's, it's, a, it's a huge topic, but it does often drive the way these indices move. So it's something I always check. And the nice thing about Tradeetix is when you're checking gamma exposure on their website, which is under the spy options dashboard, you can actually see this update real time because they use volume to do the gamma calculation instead of open interest. So normally you have to wait until market close, but with Tradeetix, you can actually see it updating real time, which is surprisingly useful. Now, Another thing that I'm always keeping in mind, and so this is the price action that we saw today, is trend direction. And I do not like trading against trend. It's just something to keep in mind. If if you we so market structure is the concept where you could see here we're in a downtrend and we're making lower highs and lower lows. And then all of a sudden we start to get a market structure break where we make a higher low. But that's considered a weak market structure break. And at that point, I'm kind of just setting up my hands. I have no problem trading this downtrend trend over here. I actually did trade this downtrend at the open because I was very confident we were going to move down from just bad economic data, although it wasn't nearly as bad as I expected. And that was in the back of my mind. But when I saw these these big wicks and candles, I took shorts and and I basically held them until we started seeing uh, this market structure break occur. Now, what happens is when we make this higher low, it's still a weak market structure break because we didn't break a previous high. But all of a sudden, when we make a higher high and then another higher low, now we're in an uptrend. And this is what I want to get into because I was not expecting us to go into an uptrend so early. And I don't think a lot of traders were. And my whole goal was figuring out, okay, what is driving this uptrend shift? And if we go to the next page, you can see over here in the bottom right corner, I have the normal market net flow page that we all look at. So if you're using the TradeEdix website and you're looking at market net flow, this is the one that we're all familiar with. And you can see at the beginning of the day, puts were skyrocketing, calls were stagnant, and price was dropping, which is what we would expect. And hence the reason I took shorts here. And I assume that this would probably continue the whole day. But as you can see, from the, what I had just shown you, if we go back, we start trending upwards. And I was trying to figure out why that is because if we're looking at market net flow here, we can see that puts still are increasing and calls are just barely increasing. But all of a sudden, you can see down here, the white line is the SPY uh, trend shift that we're, we're moving to an uptrend. Also, just a quick note about market net flow if you're not familiar. Uh, I highly recommend using the Tradeedix uh, videos that come with it, but this is showing cumulative net premiums for one day. You can set it to show more days, which I'll get into shortly. Also, you can use features on here to to have it show gamma levels for you or alg alg uh, algo flow support and resistance levels that they provide. And uh, what but what's interesting here is the calls are moving up, but so were puts, and yet we have this major trend shift. So immediately I start asking myself why that is, right? I always prefer to trade with the trend and I need to figure out why we're trending this way and if it's gonna to continue to happen. So I jumped in the, t the tr Tradeetix Discord, which I actually did two videos ago, I went into pretty heavily and I started running market net flow commands. And the reason I do this in the Discord is because you on the website, you can see how many historical Days, so one to five days historically, cumulatively, you can see the net premiums. However, in the Discord, you get an additional feature, which you can see down here is how many days till expiration. So I started running commands to see what was happening with short dated expirations, because we could see when we're looking at all expirations, puts are continuing to increase and calls aren't really increasing that much. But when we look at expirations that were shorter than 14 days, so one day cumulative 14 days till expiration, you can see puts were dropping off. So this uptrend was forming, calls were moving up, puts were stagnant, and then they start dropping off. And we get this early cross, which if you notice down here in the bottom right corner, this is one day cumulative all days till expiration, which is what we're seeing on the website. That doesn't happen till quite a while later. You can see all the way over here around a 11.45, but 
uh, it, we could see that actually happening a lot sooner. This was right around 1030 that we get this cross by looking at shorter expirations. And as soon as I saw this, it gave me the confidence I needed to start instead of being short biased, put biased, I immediately flipped my bias to or my, my own personal sentiment. Uh, I try not to have bias, but my own personal sentiment shifted to being a long sentiment, meaning I wanted to start buying calls or taking longs. And that was in tune with what the current uptrend was, as you can see here. So at that point, I'm saying, okay, where can I get in? And I'll get into that very shortly. But this was really a game changer viewing the short dated expirations and then in the top right corner you can also see when we were looking at 90 days or less expirations that was also flipping a bit quicker than the long dated expirations so uh that's a huge huge advantage with market net flow and it really helps this this flow indication this net flow indication is considered to be a leading end indicator meaning that what's happening with flow will actually lead price it will actually take price with it and whether when they're divergent price typically does end up catching up to flow so by seeing this it allowed me to, to transition to trading this uptrend much quicker than i would have if i was just looking at overall expirations now the i want to take this screenshot because someone asked me about this in the trade edX discord today and i thought it was a really great example they had done when we were talking about the short data expirations and that things were shifting to an uptrend, they had done five days cumulative, 16 days till expiration. And we can see the white line is price, green line is calls. If it's going up, that's call buying. If it's going down, that's call selling. Red line is puts, going up is put buying, going down is put selling. Now, we can see we had five days ago, we had all this massive, massive call buying. And even though puts were increasing slightly, you could see that calls were just increasing at a much more rapid pace and it was taking price with it. So we had this massive rally five days ago, which if you traded that, I believe it was Monday, uh, you would have made good money taking buying calls and going along here. And then all of a sudden, we st price starts to stagnate and actually starts to move lower. And the reason for that is because you can see in this blue, rec blue rectangle, Puts start increasing, but calls start decreasing. So there's call selling happening and there's still put buying happening, which ultimately means price is gonna go down. Now, right, this little spike right here is an example of divergence. We did see a spike in calls. So it's not huge divergence, but it is divergence. And when you see this and then calls immediately diminish, that's telling us that it, this is a great time to buy puts or go short, especially since put buying is continuing to increase. And then interestingly enough, when we get into this area with this yellow rectangle, and we can see that uh, put buying is attempting to take over, right? Put buying is taking over, call buying calls are continually getting sold, but we get a ton of chop. And this is actually partially related to the macroeconomic news we discussed, uh, anticipation of these numbers that were released today. But also, I mean, the flow is indicating that 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 is being taken into account. And we just had some range days here. We had a range day here, which was difficult for a lot of people to trade. Now, if you were looking at the one day cumulative flow, it actually did make it a lot easier to trade that uh, I've seen a couple different ways it was traded that day, but it was a range. So you could have either bought puts at the top or bought calls at the bottom and you would have been OK. But this is why, right, because there was no clear direction in the call or put flow. And then when we get to this red rectangle, you can see put buying massively takes over. Call buying is still occurring, but put buying rapidly ex uh, outpaces it and price plummets, right? So that's your confirmation. Okay, it's time to buy puts or get into shorts. But then since the call buying continues and then all of a sudden put selling begins, people are closing up these puts, we can see price starts to climb. And that's what we got into today around uh, 10, 10 o'clock, 10.30 is this was climbing. And this was the reason for it, that puts were dropping off and call buying was continuing. So I wanted to put that out because I felt like this five day cumulative flow illustrated how well flow data, market flow data impacts price. Keep in mind, this is for the entire market, excluding ETFs. So this is every single stock that, that is optionable on the market the flow data for it all combined cumulatively. And uh, the reason why that matters is because many of these, this, this flow data 
uh, belong to large holdings of the S&P 500. So they have a direct impact on uh, impact on the sentiment and price action of the S&P 500. So incredibly valuable tool. And I just thought that looking at the short data expirations, which was very predictive today, that the uptrend would continue, as well as the uh, overall five day flow, which is so insightful and in showing how predictive this tool was and not only predictive, but also to help give confirmation to hold these trades longer, right? Because we want to be able to get as much as we can out of these trades and market net flow allows you to do so. But I don't use market net flow alone. And that's what I want to get into now. I've done a whole series on volume price analysis, which is how I prefer to trade. But I want to talk about some of the biggest things that helped me with successful trades today. And that would be the volume profile. And one thing I want to call out now, I purposely took screenshots today of uh, entry points uh, and exit points where I was entering shorts and where I was putting stop losses. This is a screenshot of ES. And uh, during this, um, when, when uh, the, the uptrend was uh, ending at, at one point because market net flow was shifting. Also, this is from NQ early in the day. And what I want to point out is these gaps in volume profile. So you can see here, we have all these high volume nodes popping out. And then we get these, these low volume areas where these gaps are. And same with down here. You can see there's little ones in here, but we're more focused on the more noticeable ones. And this is where I like to, I, again, I'm only going to trade with trend and market net flow sentiment, right? I don't want to go against that unless it's a super quick scalp, which I really don't like doing. So if I'm going with the overall market trend and the market net flow sentiment, I'm confident that when we get to these volume gaps and we start seeing wicks and we start seeing high volume, which indicates stopping volume coming in, that I can get into shorts. And I, I do so trying to use limit orders in these areas, which at which point with the limit order gets picked up on these top side wicks, ideally. And then I can ride that down all the way through these high volume areas down to the next gap where I usually do my first profit targets, first or second profit targets, depending on how many gaps we make it through. And then I always like to leave some runners. And the same with NQ here, you can see we have this high volume area and then we have this gap and we have all these wicks coming out of this gap and this is a perfect area to short. Now, there's a misconception out there with volume profile that price can move through these gaps easily and that's just not true. It's actually, actually, there needs to be a lot of volume to push through these gaps because traditionally this is where all buying and selling stops. So it's the most likely area that we're going to see price stop. And unless we're in a strong trend and you're going with the trend direction or with the flow sentiment direction, it's not likely that we're going to get through that gap. So that's why I really like these as great entry areas. And the best part is because it's a gap, it's a range, it's a blo uh, order block per se. It comes with a built in stop loss. So if I take a short right at this ledge, then my stop loss is going to be at the under end of the gap because I know without some serious buying pressure, we're not going to come up through this. Um, and so that's, I love volume profile for that reason. And just to show you the ES chart, now this volume profile is complete, but you can see from my screenshots here that even when it's not complete, it's very easy to spot these ledges and these gaps. And if we just take a look at this, I mean, you can see here price market opens, price rapidly drops down out of the gate on high volume. And then when we get to these, these uncharted areas, these low volume nodes, we start to slow down and we stop. And then as we come up, I just take note at every pivot, right? So as we start this uptrend, every pivot, we could have gotten in at a low volume gap. And then we could have rode it up and a perfect take profit area would have been this next gap, right? Which you can see right here. And then when we pivot down, it's in an area. Now this looks different now because it's the end of the day, but this area had less volume, which indicated that this was a perfect time to get in. Now I wouldn't have gotten in on these candles, but once I see this candle form would have been a great time to mark it in because you can assume, especially looking at market net flow, that trend is going to continue. And this is a very bullish candle with this bottom side wick. It shows that buyers are really stepping in to push this thing higher, especially after this low volume pivot. You can see as we come down on these candles, volume is diminishing and then we kind of run out of steam in this low, lower volume area and then boom, we push it higher. And then once again, you can see we come up, 
we run out of steam, where do we pivot at? A low volume area. And so this would be another great place to, to add more longs or enter longs. And when I leave runners, I like to leave those runners on until I see a market structure break. So any runners I had on this downtrend and all of a sudden we get this higher low, that's a market structure break. Time to exit any position I'm in. In this case, if we enter here, when we have market net flow confirmation and we're officially in an uptrend because of the higher high as well as the lower highs, this case, I open runners and I exit at the volume. I take ha, take profits at the next volume gaps, right? And then I don't exit all positions though. I always leave runners and I even scale in and add positions as we go. And at this point, there is no literally no reason to get out until right here. No reason to leave exit your runners until right here because all of a sudden we make a lower high, which is a market structure break. But as you can see, all these areas where we have these lower volume gaps, when we're pivoting down, these are the places that you wanna, you wanna add contracts on. And as we get up here, this is uncharted territory, right? I would never chase into this if you're not already in this because you didn't enter down here with these wicks and volume and this little volume gap. Uh, I'd ha never recommend chasing. And when we get into this uncharted territory and then we start to see this sort of action, this is where you start taking profit. And then when we never end up making a uh, higher high, that means the trend is in trouble and it's just time to exit runners. But then the same thing happens in reverse as we start this downtrend and as we see market net flow shift. Uh, so if we look here um, back at the previous screenshots, as we see market net flow, you can see calls start dying down right around this time. This is that double top we had. We can see calls start dying down and puts start rising, right? So, and these are the short dated expirations. So we know it's time to get out, but you can see we can take entries we can flip our, our sentiment, our bias, right? We had a double top. We have we have market net flow sentiment shift. We had a trend break. We actually had a reasonably strong market structure break, right? We didn't we didn't make a lower low here, but I mean we we made multiple uh, lower highs, and this this tells us when we fail to get back up here and, and we're rejecting on these candles. You can see these wicks are perfect times to enter shorts and lo and behold, they are right at the volume gap. And this looked exactly the same as it did at this point in time because you can see price never came back up and added more volume bars here. So this is how it looked. And this is a great time to limit in shorts. And then of course, what do we do? We ride it down. Now I would take profits in this, this volume gap, which we got around here. Actually this volume gap, first profit target, second profit target. And then uh, this would be a third profit target right around here. This actually looks like the POC is holding. But once again, where do you add in? And the volume gap. And then as we go down, we go down. And it's the same sort of deal. You don't exit your runners until you get a strong market structure break, which is what we get here. Now, that might cost you some money when you get now when you see these. Now, this is when the JPM collar kicked in. So I was out of all my trades anyway at this point. I was actually considering entering longs at this volume gap but I didn't do so because I wasn't sure how it was gonna go when JPM was rolling their collar. I've seen it go up, I've seen it go down. I don't like to gamble, but you could definitely make a good case here for holding this value area low, these wicks, this volume gap that we are holding here. And then you just have this really huge impulse move. And then you have a huge rejection candle once again at the volume gap. And then huge, huge rejection candle top side wicks higher volume and then we move down and I mean this totally could have been played I just chose not to I erred on the side of caution especially once we start getting this this choppiness I'm not a fan of trading that kind of stuff especially when I had really good trades earlier in the day but I just wanted to point out the importance of these volume gaps and then one other thing that I added on was Fibonacci now I don't do Fibonacci the normal way and I took this screenshot that I had earlier in the day and when we were in this uptrend, right? And this was before, this was in this era, this uptrend right here. I actually have my Fibonacci set up to, uh, so now here's the thing, Fibonacci, you, uh, you wanna make sure that if you're in an uptrend trend, you draw it from high to low. If you're in a downtrend, you draw it from low to high. And the reason for that is because these numbers are basically percentage retracements. And I, I, I use this oftentimes to measure how much are we retracing, right? So this was a market structure break, 
but again it seemed weak and I did actually take a trade here now uh, at this point even though we had a weak market structure break when I saw this behavior and this was occurring in the volume gap I also had fibs on at the time and the way I have mindset and everyone likes to set a difference personal choice but I want to see when we've retraced 20 to 30 percent as well as when we've retraced 70 to 80 percent and then of course the 50 percent mark and the reason for that is when you're below so when we're in an uptrend and it comes back below the 50 percent mark that means you're getting in my mind is telling me okay we're getting over a 50 percent discount and when we see it hold right in this zone and this zone lines up with volume gaps that's telling me okay we are in a we are getting a nice 70 80 percent discount on these calls or these longs whatever you're trading great time to enter and so where do we exit we exit at this 20 to 30 percent zone especially if it lines up with a volume gap now you can see it was the 20 percent zone that lined up with the volume gap but that's how i personally use fibs i treat it as a way to tell me not as support and resistance levels but as a way to tell me because i'm using the volume gaps as support and resistance levels uh, but it's a way to tell me okay when are we getting a discounted price it's a way to measure a strong impulse move and that's something I should point out you don't want to use fibs on these weak moves right here it needs to be a strong impulse move where you made a higher high or a lower low if you're measuring a downtrend and it's a great way to especially when it lines up with volume gaps to know okay this and, and you see the wicks and other volume price analysis concepts coming in it's just a great way to know when you're getting uh, the biggest bang for your buck per se right because that's all it is 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 uh, supply and demand and, and you know you want to when you're buying it you want to buy low and sell high and FIBS helps you measure just how low you're buying and how high you're selling and uh, it's just a, a useful little trick I use from time to time to assist me in my volume profile trading I know it's a lot different from how you other see, see other people use FIBS but it's what works for me I've lost money when I use FIBS the traditional way, and so this is how I do it to assist me in my trading. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, one last thing before we end this. I know I threw a ton of stuff at you, very dense video. I highly recommend watching it multiple times if you didn't pick everything up. Um, is uh, the TradeEdix Discord community. Not only does being in here allow you to get that extra control when you can see short dated expirations, but one other key benefit is community so we are we are in there all day uh talking about our trades now i i have a i'm not in there all day because i, I have a full-time job i'm focused on but it's a nice community a lot of smart people are in there we all bounce ideas off each other we're all trying to help each other we're not it's not a we're not calling out trades right we have tradey flow and other ai mechanisms to help identify good potential trades trades and then we have all the tools we need with trade edicts to follow that through determine if it is a good play or not but what we're in here doing is essentially teaching each other how to fish teaching each other tricks teaching each other uh, ways to be successful in the trading game and also help confirming that we're visualizing the market correctly a big example of that was today when we got into that that part where uh, where we're essentially um, trying to figure out why we're in an uptrend right this is this is what helped us figure it out other people were looking at other tools as well such as bookmap and whatnot and we're all bouncing ideas off each other talking about gamma exposure changes talking about net flow changes talking about uh, short dated expirations things like that and I just find it to be incredibly helpful to have a community to trade with so I highly suggest that you come join us if you're a premium member of trade edicts you can join it at no extra cost and it's an incredibly valuable resource so Anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or reach out to me in Discord. And I hope you found some value in this. And good luck in your trading. And thanks again for watching.